And the first module will be discussing the global epidemiology of tuberculosis. This is largely based on WHO Global Tuberculosis Report for 2016. But this is what we don't want to do. This uh, is a uh, photo and story from a very recent uh, article in the New York Times, March 20th, uh, just earlier this week, pointing out that uh, in Venezuela, which is in the midst of major uh, economic uh, and political upheavals, that tuberculosis has resurged. And it makes the point that we really are, really need to be on top of tuberculosis to keep it down. Once the pressure is let up, there is a high likelihood of resurgence of the disease. So it's a disease that has great resilience and we really need to maintain a strong control and care program in order to prevent resurgences such as this from occurring. So the outline of the presentation is as follows. Three main areas, global epidemiology of tuberculosis and uh, tuberculosis epidemiologic trends. And we'll take a more detailed look at some of the major issues in global TB care and control. Then a look at clinical tuberculosis in today's context, making the point that the disease is increasingly complicated, complicated by comorbidities and complicated by other population risk factors that are increasingly being recognized and quantified. So this is a WHO map of the, showing the global incidence of tuberculosis country by country in 2016. The darker colors that you see there that indicates a uh, tuberculosis case rate of over 300 per 100,000 population. That's very high. And you see the countries that are the, have these uh, very high case rates, mainly in sub-Saharan Africa, but also in South and Southeast Asia. To look at the actual numbers of cases occurring in these countries, uh, this list shows the top seven, with India leading the group at uh, 2.8 million new cases a year. That's a phenomenal number. That's almost a third of the total cases in the world. Indonesia second with just over a million new cases annually, followed by China with 895,000, the Philippines with 573,000, and Pakistan with 518,000. You'll recognize that all of these countries are uh, in Asia. The only two African countries to make this list are South Africa at 438,000 and Nigeria with 407,000. This now looks at the trends in uh, incidence of tuberculosis from 2000 through 2016. The panel on your left shows the incidence of disease. The panel on the right shows tuberculosis mortality among persons who were HIV negative. The green line indicates the estimated number of cases based on WHO's uh, estimates that have uh, been uh, developed using a number of different data points. Uh, the black line is the actual number of notifications of new and relapse cases each year. And then uh, the red line is the number of, or the incidence of HIV positive uh, tuberculosis cases. This slide shows the deaths in uh, millions per year. This is the actual number of deaths and uh, incidents and deaths. The uh, TB incidence you see in the green line is estimated to be at about 10 million new cases a year in 2016. You'll notice that there is a gap between the, the black line, which is the notification of new and relapsed cases, and the actual estimated number of cases in 2016. I'll come back to that point in just a minute. Likewise, you can see the number of deaths in the right-hand panel. Um, 
from 2000 through 2016 expressed as deaths among HIV uh, negatives in the blue and HIV positives in the red. And as you can obviously see, the uh, number of deaths is uh, going down rather steadily. This looks again at the number of cases, the incident cases occurring each year, and makes the point that there's a gap between the number of cases notified, which total about 6 million in 2016, uh, and the estimate of about 10 million in 2016, leaving uh, about 4 million missing cases. These may not be actually missing, but they are missing in the notified data. Therefore, there is no indication of their status, whether they are being treated, how successfully they're being treated, no information on about 40% of the estimated number of cases in the world in 2016. This is a very important point, and again, I'll, I'll come back to this later in the discussion. The other point to make here is that in this uh, red circle, you can see that the no notifications of new and relapse cases has been relatively stagnant going back as far as 2008. And so this is a concern as well, that the gap between the estimated number of cases and the actual number of cases notified is not really narrowing uh, substantially. Just to bring this a little closer to home, uh, these are the case rates uh, per 100,000 population in six different regions of the world. I've circled the top number uh, on the y-axis in each of these graphs to point out that the scale is very different. For example, in Africa, the, the scale goes to 400 per 100,000 per year, whereas in the Americas, it's 40 per 100,000 per year. So Africa has the high scale. Southeast Asia, likewise, has the high scale. Uh, the Americas has the lowest. Europe, uh, next lowest with uh, the scale uh, uh, peaking at 60. Eastern Mediterranean at 150 and Western Pacific at 150. So when you look at these, they're not directly comparable because the scales are, are different. You can see that rates in Africa are uh, progressively declining and uh, of importance and of particular note, the red line, the uh, re reflecting the number of cases among HIV positive persons has decreased quite substantially. And in the other regions of the world, that red line, the number of HIV associated cases is very low. So that's the end of this first module. We'll proceed to look at some more specific uh, data 